These dips show the impact of zero COVID. The chart that you are looking at shows future bookings from shippers here in the United States from all ports of China to all ports in the U.S. Zero COVID's become one of the select drivers of global recession, of the threat of global recession. If a company is relying on China for any type of material or for manufacturing, they're going to be impacted when it comes to the dynamic COVID and the closures that are ensued as well as the testing. If you slow China down, the world slows down. If you stop China, the world panics. So why is China so important in terms of global supply chains? Well, China is actually the world's largest exporting economy and the world's second largest importing economy. So a huge amount of trade comes in and more importantly, out of China. And when you look at the world's top 20 ports, eight of them are in China. So China is really the origin when it comes to the supply chain for numerous countries around the world. Technology, retail, automobiles, these are just some of the industries that rely on China. Maybe you've got an iPhone, uh, maybe there's an electric vehicle or a Tesla on your drive, uh, maybe it's the clothes in your wardrobe or the toys that your kids are playing with. There's a good chance that a majority of them have come from or through China. So trade is a series of pipes and a lot of people have this conception that trade is just about the port. There are many different pipes that feed into the port that enable trade to flow. So when you look at China and the various pipes, if you will, the biggest concerns that you have are the availability of the container so you can grab that container to get filled. But more importantly, is there a truck that's able to move that product either off the terminal or to the terminal so it can be loaded? Wuhan went into the world's first COVID lockdown. And more than two years later, Chinese cities, including the capital Beijing, still use the same tactics to stop the spread of the virus. China instituted zero COVID from the very first days of the outbreak in Wuhan. The controls have not been able to succeed in the way they have in the past. What are the main ports that we're talking about here? The top three are Ningbo, Shenzhen, and Shanghai. And I want to just focus on Shanghai for a second. Shanghai isn't just China's manufacturing hub, it's really the world's manufacturing hub. It handles about 40% of the goods that go out of China. And we've already seen uh, all of those three go into zero COVID lockdowns over the last year, and the disruption's been quite substantial. China's ports are automated unlike here in the United States. And so they are very efficient and they're able to circumvent any type of disruption because they don't have a lot of people moving the containers. They have driverless cars, or trucks rather, that move the containers. And so when it comes to vessel schedule, a vessel can still get in and out in a day or two. And remember with the pandemic, it impacted people. And so if you don't have people available to move the trucks because they're in quarantine or because they have numerous uh, testing sites they have to adhere to before they get to their final destination, it's going to slow things down. Manufacturing hub Shenzhen mandated its biggest companies to operate in a closed loop with workers living on site. Shanghai ordered similar arrangements for warehouses for steel, halting work for three days. Frustrations continue to grow with the restrictions, but no relief in sight. What you're seeing is multiple concurrent outbreaks migrating around the country, disrupting the economy, putting upwards at one point in this early summer, 400 million people under, under severe lockdown. Now, Shanghai is a very large city, and amongst the city, there are various neighborhoods. You can have different testing sites that a driver has to go through in order to get to their final destination. I've spoken with Seco Logistics, who is a provider for the CNBC supply chain heat map, and they have told us that, you know, what would normally be, say, a one day trip or a two day trip can now be an upwards to five to seven days.
the consequences are not just the impact upon China's economy, upon the workforce, upon consumers, upon the exports, upon supply chains, all of which have been massively disrupted. The projected growth rate for the year was 5.5%. They're going to fall far short of that. What's happened over the last two years is that we've seen prices for ocean freight go through the roof. So those stories of a sort of 10x, 20x increase on occasion are true. When it comes to ocean freight rates, there are two different ways that a shipper can purchase of a container price. And so the first is negotiating a long-term contract, which really is only about a couple of months to even a year with an ocean carrier directly. Or you can go on the spot market and buy a price that can lock you in for one container for that specific frame in time. But unfortunately, because of the congestion at the ports of the United States, as well as in Europe, the congestion has actually restricted the amount of vessels that are available, and more importantly, the containers that are available for use. Really, what supply chains thrive on is predictability. It's that lack of predictability which is really hurting businesses at the moment, which is also driving some of the conversation around reshoring, nearshoring, etc. Can we reach more predictable models? And the only thing we can say about China at the moment is that for many businesses, they're looking at China as being predictably unpredictable. In China, you have acute vulnerabilities. You have a population that has no protection through infection. You have a large population that elderly in particular, acutely vulnerable, that are not protected. The vaccines that have been introduced are far less effective and you do not have uh, mass access to Paxlovid. So what that means is that the Chinese leadership, when they look at the prospect of reopening, they're a bit frozen in their, in their place by fear, by fear of unleashing a virus into a population that is so acutely vulnerable, overwhelming the health system, and rapidly seeing upwards of a million people die. This is an inflationary pressure that the consumer pays for. Logistics prices have always been tacked on to the price of a good. And with this congestion and with this increased prices, even though that we've seen a pullback, if you will, in the consumer and future orders, the congestion is still either fueling up the price or holding that price up. And that means that the inflationary pressures on the consumer will continue. Things have improved a little bit uh, over the last six months. If you look at the three year contract rate uh, or the spot rate, um, both are a little bit improved on where they were in sort of 2020. Um, but if you look at them versus 2018, uh, it's pretty grim reading. So most businesses are getting better at coping with these lockdowns. I think they're just accepting that now that this is a fact of life, a fact of doing business with a low cost country, or in particular, you know, doing business with China.